and the homie Lamarcus Nash, man. Appreciate the dime, brother. Appreciate it. All right, man. Let's talk about this. The problem with having people in your life that stay around for a while is we have a tendency as humans to base our interaction with them based on what they used to do. You know what I'm saying? Based on what they used to do, what they used to bring to the situation, what they used to bring to the table, what they used to bring to the equation. Sometimes it wasn't even that positive when they were bringing a little something. But as human beings, we tie ourselves to people because let's be honest, we could talk this going monk and talk about we don't need nobody. All we want to like little kids, but we all need human interaction. That's why when guys say they swearing women off, I don't know how you're going to do that. I can't do it. I need some human female interaction sometimes, brothers. And I think we all do. But we get into the habit of it's kind of like a man being stuck in a relationship he don't need to be in no more. He held on past the time when it wasn't benefiting him anymore. Listen, you have the right to move beyond anything that doesn't benefit you anymore. If there are no benefits to anything, don't do it. If you hit a ceiling at your job and you want to go higher, but you know you ain't going to be able to do it at that job, why are you still there? You still there five years after you realized that was your ceiling. You've been making the same thing for five years, doing the same thing for five years, and you know that you deserve more and got more skills than that. You know it. But we stay stuck in situations, not because of the situations, but because of our ties to people. But today we're going to take a deep dive on that. See, here's the thing, man. Everybody in your life is replaceable except you. You're the only one who's irreplaceable. And I don't mean you can replace each person with a person, but you can replace these people with some things. You can't replace your mama with another mama, of course. If you got one son, you can't replace, well, you can't replace your son with another son. You can do that. You can replace a child with another child you know, if you want to have another. One. But you, you don't always have to replace people with people. So it's kind of like the whole thing with dating. I don't have time to date. I'm too busy chasing things that are more important than, than, than intimate pleasure with a woman. You understand what I'm saying? I have more important things. There is no point in my life that I can remember in the past 20 years where I didn't have something better to do than go chase a woman. You know what I'm saying? When my guys hit me up now, I'm like, hey, man, boy, we're going to Sunday, man. You no, know, we're going to be down there about a week, man. Don't worry about it, man. The time shall already pay you for it. I'd be like, like, man, y'all, 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 uh, y'all take some pictures, man. Y'all take some pictures for me. Man, bro, you'll never go, man. Bro, I ain't got no whole week to spend down there doing what? If I come down there, I'm going to be down there working while I'm down there. And if y'all don't want me to do that, I know y'all don't want me while y'all going out kicking it. I'm, 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 I'm at the spot working. I know y'all don't want that, but whatever y'all doing out there ain't worth me not doing what I'm doing. Because I figured out a long time ago that you got to replace people who don't bring benefit to your life, no matter who it is. See, here's what you got to understand. Getting health, wealth, maturity, spiritual awareness and peace of mind require you to give up on people. You're going to have to give up on at least one person for all of those things. Because it's always our relationships with people that are holding us back. It's always our relationship with people that are holding us back. You don't have a relationship with anything else in life. Though. Even if you're an addict, you're an addict and you keep going back because you won't change your circle of friends. It's always about the people. Now, I'm not blaming the people. I'm saying your choice to deal with those people. If, remember, I always tell you, men, everything you do can be traced back to a choice that you made. Everything. Everything can be traced back to a choice that you made. Everything. There's nothing that has ever happened in your life as an adult. Now, there's when you, as a child, you, you, you don't make your own decisions. You're at the mercy of the adults around you. But as an adult, everything you do, even down to allowing your childhood things to affect you as an adult. That's a choice you make. Well, I can't get over and be away and get some counseling. Well, I did counseling. You better go to God then. You ain't did that. So it requires you to give up on someone. And, and whoever that person is, you have to ask yourself, okay, this person is standing between me and peace of mind. I really love this person. I really care a lot about this person. But this person is standing between me and my peace of mind. So what am I going to do? Am I going to keep this person or am I going to cut this person off and pursue my peace of mind? Which one of these things am I going to do? Which one of these things do I think has the most importance in my life? That's what you have to ask yourself every step of the way. Every step of the way. You know how many men are trapped in a relationship right now? Women too. Women are trapped in a relationship they don't want to be in. 
What we have to understand is the majority of people you come across have some type of mental issue from what they've dealt with in the past. Sometimes it's from childhood. Sometimes it's from school. Sometimes it's from a previous relationship. It could be from anything. It could be a falling out with family. It could be anything. But most people you meet in this society have an emotional or mental issue that they're dealing with based on their what? Relationships with other people. People that they should have cut off. You ever heard a woman who's in an abusive relationship say, he wouldn't let me leave? Think about the stories we hear where the man get mad and take everybody out. Somebody should have left that situation. Whatever you got to do. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes it's time to cut people off. Think about the people who, who it's just like the stock market. Think about the people who, who decided they were going to get in, they were going to get in on Bitcoin at 55,000. Oh, they heard you know what I'm saying? Now, now they, they preaching it. They preaching the, the good old faith gospel. Ah, oh, just wait. It's gonna bounce back. It's it's gonna bounce back. But here's the thing about something that's unregulated. You don't know what it's gonna do. You are hoping that it bounce back. You are hoping. And just like somebody who falls off in your life and then they're back on and then they fall off and then they're back on. You get to the point where every time they fall off and get back on, you know they're going to fall back off, but you're hoping they don't. And so there's 10 times, that cycle goes over 10 times in your life. You look up, you have wasted 15 years of your life with somebody that you shouldn't have wasted even two with. You would have wasted an extra 13 years on somebody that you found out what didn't mean to be in your life at year number two. That's real, brothers. When you worry about the benefit of the thing you know right now and you decide you're never going to let it go, no matter what happens. People who get married and say, we married and we married for better or for worse. Well, you mean for worse? What kind of worse? As bad as it could possibly get, you still going to stay there? Man, let me tell you something. That is a recipe for getting messed over 100% of the time. That's a recipe for getting messed over 100% of the time. If you make up in your mind that no matter what, this person right here is going to be with me. Or no matter what, I'm going to be with this person right here. No matter what, we're going to roll forever. Drake said on the Life's Good Strong About Future, never turn my back on Epic G, God forbid. He just told this man, bro, I'm always be down with you. I never turn my back on you. That's a strong, never is a strong word, bro. Never is a strong word. Let me tell you the two strongest words that you can use that don't mean nothing because you can't control either one of them. Never and forever. No, wait, I don't even use those words. I don't use those words. Only time I can use those words is talking about the past. I have never. No, they never. No, she never. That's the only time. We're talking about the present or the future. You can't use never because you can't predict never. And you sure can't predict forever. Some people's forever ended yesterday. They didn't know it. Just saw a story of Milwaukee, man. They went to a career, man, found six people there, man, laid out. Saw another story out in uh, Inglewood, California. Folks out there, man, celebrating the birthday, man. Cats rolled up, man, add the whole place out. You got to think about it. You don't know when forever is. You don't know when never is. Only thing you can control is the now. And what you have to do for the now is do whatever you can just in case you have a forever. You See, you got to protect forever on a just in case basis. Oh, man, what if I do have a forever? How is now going to benefit my forever if I do have a forever? Who is in my life that I need to cut off? Man, let me tell you something. And I'm going to be honest with you. Everybody in my life is expendable. Everybody. Boy, I cut anybody off. When I say anybody, let that cover anybody you can think of in your mind. I will cut anybody off. Period. You understand? I don't run in packs. I, I don't I don't follow no crew. I don't follow what nobody else does. I speak what I want to speak. I say what I want to say. I live how I want to live. I stand on my own principles. They're the only ones I'm willing to die for. My own principles. I don't care what everybody else is doing. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. If what I'm doing is the opposite of what everybody else is doing, so what? Because I ain't even thinking about what everybody else is doing. I'm thinking about the things I can do to preserve myself. 
I'm thinking about the things that I can do to all to, to make sure that I put myself in a position to win today. When tomorrow come here, if I put myself in a position to win today, guess what's going to happen when I wake up in tomorrow? I'm still going to be winning. And that's going to be some residual winning left over from today. If you go to sleep winning, you ain't going to wake up losing. Unless you got a whole lot of money in that crypto stuff, you might lose. You might wake up tomorrow losing like a fool. Am I saying don't put no money in it? No, take a chance. But do not put all your eggs in that basket, boy. You ain't gonna never eat breakfast no more. But do not put all your eggs in any basket because you're not gonna eat breakfast anymore. Words like never and forever, those are eggs in the basket words. Fee, what up, bro? Another thing I tell you is this, man. But giving someone more than, more than once for the same egregious act is suicide to your personal safety. You are destroying your own personal safety if you forgive someone more than once. Now, am I saying you should ever give anybody a second chance? No, I believe in second chances. I am a firm believer in second chances. I've had some second chances in my life. You understand? If things had gone the way that the law intended for them to go, then I probably would have just been getting out a couple years ago. But we ain't going to talk about that. What I'm saying is this, you men have to understand that forgiving someone more than once for some egregious act simply lets them know that you'll take anything. Man, listen, there are very few occasions where someone did something once and you let them get away with it and they didn't do it again. Maybe you didn't find out about it. Even ourselves, if somebody lets us get away with something, then we're not going to believe they're going to do anything because here's the thing about accepting something. Once you accept something as normal, it doesn't feel bad the next time. Every time you accept it, it's easier to accept until it becomes what? Normal. It becomes normal. A woman in a relationship where a man put hands on her, she starts to explain it away to people. She starts to cover it up with makeup. She starts to make it seem like it's not happening because in her world, it's no big deal when actually it's a huge deal. A man who's with a woman finds out, man, she went, the baby he thought was his ain't his. He's still with the woman. Is she going to stop? Is she going to, is she going to say, oh, he forgave me. I'm never going to do that again. No, that's not how humans function unless they have a really strong relationship with the most high. And that's why I demand that people who deal with me, man, if you don't have a relationship with God, man, if you don't believe there's no God, if you live your life, man, like there is no God and you go strictly all the way against the principles of the most high. I'm not dealing with you on a personal level. Money, hey man, the, the love of money is the root of all evil. So money already got some, some evil attached to it. So we're going to make money, cool. We could do business. But any personal relationship, because let's be honest, we don't know who we're doing business with right now. Every time you go to Walmart, man, you don't know what you support. Every time you order from Amazon, man, you don't know what you support. You have no idea what you support. You have no idea who you support. You have no idea what they're into. So we're not going to act like we don't do business every day. And with them, you don't make no money. You spend money. So I, what I'm trying to say is, this, and that's why I don't. That's why you don't see me, man. Like, man, I've had several offers to do product endorsement. You haven't seen me endorse one product. Why? Because I have to do research on product. If I can't research it all the way down to the owner, I need to find out who created it and what their history is. Because I'm not supporting that. They got no wicked history attached to it. That little, that little bit of money ain't worth that. Now I do have one product I'm thinking about, man. Because I've tried it and did this for none. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually have a, a, a unique video spot for it, man. Uh, it's going to be something different. But it, it's a it's a great product, man. So I've tried some products. You know, I've tried quite a few of them. But when I search them up, you know, there, there's some, I, I don't, I don't want to rock with it. You know, for me, all money ain't good money. You understand what I'm saying? And so what I like to say is, that, and I'm not saying anybody else feels like they're going to take every dollar. Some people do. So when you forgive someone more than once for, some, for, the, for something, let me tell you what it tells them. It tells them that they own you emotionally. It tells them that whatever, whatever, whatever it is that they've done, they have such a hold on you that you'll accept that from them. And you know what people do? If you'll accept level five disrespect, I might not go straight to level six, but I'm going to try level 5.2. I'm going to see if you'll take 5.2. Then we'll see if you'll take 5.8. Then I'm going to jump you right on up to seven. I'm going to get impatient and, and, and we'll stop taking them small increments. If you let someone disrespect you willingly, 
then you're going to have to earn their respect. And how do you earn someone respect? Either by knocking them off or cutting them off. Only two ways to earn. Only two ways to earn respect is to cut somebody off or knock somebody off. Those are the greatest two ways to earn respect that have ever been known to man. You know what I'm saying? You got to prove to somebody or move from somebody. That's all you can do. Another thing I tell you, man, is this. Stop pouring sugar on the bitter words of others and softening the blow of their harsh attacks on you, your ideas, your belief system, your personal character, or, or, or whatever they're doing. And when someone tells you something, then you got to take heed to it. Ain't no reason to sugarcoat it. Ain't no, ain't no, well, I'm trying to be the big, the bigger, the bigger person, the nicer person, the, the, the I'm trying to do all that. Now, nah, man, I don't want to hear none of that. If somebody's saying something to you or interacting with you, with you in a way that exhibits some type of disdain or hatred toward you, man, you have the right to respond the same. That's why I don't understand how men can constantly berate, let, let's say if, if a dog constantly berates rabbits, I'm talking about do never talk bad about rabbits, how they smell, how they look, how they, you know, all, everything. How many ticks and fleas they got on them, you know, how, how they don't taste good when people cook them. If a dog take, do never talk bad about rabbits, how is that dog then going to get mad when a few of those rabbits say, well, I got some things to say about the dog too. At least we don't lick ourselves to clean ourselves. You can say a whole bunch of things. At least we don't eat our food twice. But the bottom line is people live in a society where they want to sugarcoat everything. They want to lessen the blow. And then it gets so twisted that you say five things about people and you sugarcoat it yourself and try to lessen the blow of it. Oh, you just being sensitive. No, you just no, you just in your feelings. Stop being so emotional. Stop. Man, let me tell y'all something that happened. Man, I'm going to tell y'all this. There was a cat on IG, man, that was sending me nothing but sucker cunty. Nothing but sucker cunty. No matter how many times I said, bro, I don't talk about things like that. I don't talk about things like that. Then the dude sent me some man that was so foul, man. I was surprised that he was even able to send it as a message. So I blocked him. Dude DM me from another channel, from, from another page and said, man, why you blocked my main page with all the five content I sent you? Then he got the destiny to say, you, you just like these women. How do you respond to that? How do you respond to some dude who just DM you from another page to ask you why you blocked him? Who cares about another dude blocking him saying that you the one acting like a woman? How do you respond to that? What's the response to that? I don't know. Y'all tell me so I can respond. What's the response to that? What is the response to a man hitting you up saying, man, 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 why you block my main page, man? Man, man, why you block me, dog? Man, 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 you shouldn't block me, dog. Why you, why you, man, why, why, why you don't want to deal with me no more? What I do? I, I love you, though. I'll do anything you want me to do. But come on, bro. How am I supposed to respond to that? But here's the deal. All I could do is say, look, bro. I told you, I mean, this, this is how, this, this is how it went. Now, here's the thing. Because honestly, I had to go back and look. I really didn't remember blocking dude. I didn't even know. I, you know, man, you, think, you know how many people send me content? I ain't even remember. But when I went to his to, to the page he hit me from, I saw the same pictures on that. So I said, oh, this the dude right here. So I simply said, look, bro, from the way you just reacted with the shame language and all that, it's a good thing I did. Because I never would have known you were this type of guy. I never would have known it. So was I going to go back and unblock it? No. Who cares? Man, you got a lot of things in your head if you care if another man block you, man. You got you you got you you really you really need to check your masculine energy if you care about another man blocking you. A man? You care about a man blocking. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. But this is an example of how you got to cut people off. See if I tell you, "Hey, bro, don't do that. That ain't good." I don't like that. I don't want that. And you keep doing it. Yes. Yes. 
I'm going to cut you off. I'm going to give up on you. See, if I can't talk to you about it, then that means you don't want to talk the talk. If you can't talk the talk, then you're going to have to walk the walk. But this is what happens. People never miss the value that you bring to their lives until you stop bringing it to their lives. They never miss it. Never miss it. And that's just the reality of it, man. Crazy things happen out here, man. A woman can move on to the next man and then try to circle back to you while she's still with that man for whatever reason, for intimacy, for, for financial assistance, for somebody just to talk to or whatever it is, because people don't miss. You cannot allow somebody to have your value again once they've lost it. I say this again. This is the most important thing I can tell y'all right now. You never allow somebody to experience the value of having you in their lives once they've lost it. Now, if you just want to be facetious and, and let them have access just for a brief period of time so you can just cut them off, then, okay, I get that. That's kind of petty, but I get it. Just depending on how, just depending on what happened before you had to cut them off. I get it. I, can, I get that kind of a little bit. But what I'm saying is you cannot, because here's the thing, you tell people you diminish your own value when you allow somebody to mistreat you, mistreat you in any kind of way and you accept that. You understand what I'm saying? When you accept mistreatment from anyone, you're telling them, okay, you may have thought I value myself as much as I did, but I really don't because I'm going to take this from you. you. You just can't do that, man. So when you pour sugar on other people's word, what I mean by that is try to make excuses or try to make it seem like it wasn't that bad or try to figure out what it probably didn't mean that or that ain't what it was. Nah, bro, this is the bottom line. And then just a funny note, man, the dude who said that, man, I ain't never used one piece. That dude sending me four, five, six, seven pieces of content a day. I ain't never used one piece of content he sent me. Man. I want y'all to think about that. Dude was sending me five, six, seven pieces of content every day, man, for probably like two months. I ain't never used a piece of content. But I just thought about that. So when you think about it, man, you have to keep in mind that you have to focus on keeping your internal peace. You have to focus on keeping your internal peace. And how do you always protect your internal peace? By accepting when someone else's words or actions declare war on you. When someone else treats you like an enemy, at any point. See, here's the thing. I don't hold grudges, but once you don't mess with me, I'm never going to rock with you. It's just bottom line. Once you declare yourself an enemy of mine, you will never be an ally of mine. Ever. It, it don't, e even if you realize that, oh man, I made a mistake, bro. I didn't even know you like that. You should have thought about that before you did that. That's what men do. Before men cross a line and create a war with somebody, men make sure that, they, that they're attacking the right enemy. So you cannot allow anyone to declare war on you and you try to keep, you know how much of a fool you got to be to try to keep the peace with someone that want to go to war with you. I want y'all to think about that. Somebody is trying to go to war with you. I'm talking about, listen, they already got their weapons firing at your compound and you try to call them on the phone and say, hey man, can we all just get alone? They don't want to get alone. And sometimes, man, just be hate. Could be somebody that's just a hater, man. It's not always someone who's, you know, trying to do something other than just be a hater. Sometimes it's just a hater, man. Got a couple super chats here, man. Let me get them right quick. Rashard Smith, man. Salute, bro. Appreciate the five bones. A lot of us men prioritize to filling up a new woman over to filling a new money. It's tragic how men will self-destruct their potential. I agree with you 100%, man. That's why I tell you, men, make sure that the new woman is attached to the new money. If a woman ain't got no way to contribute to the process of your progress, she shouldn't have access to your life. Access to your life comes with a fee. It comes with a fee. So if you are just out here randomly sleeping with all these women, all these women, you're telling yourself, I have no value. The only thing I have a value is my wood. The only thing at which I'm good is working my wood. That's what you're telling the woman. That's what you're telling the world. 
You're less of a man. You don't have the right to challenge a man like me, if that's what you're saying. You don't have a right to challenge a man like Rayshard Smith. You don't have a right to challenge a man like Mr. O. You don't have a right to challenge a man like Dark Truth. You don't have a right to challenge a man like SJ3. You don't have a right to challenge a young man like, like Mark Hale. You don't have a right to challenge a man like Afi Kingdom. You don't have a right to challenge a man like Flims. You don't have a right to challenge a man like Big Rich. You don't have the right to challenge a man who is creating value in himself as a man when all your value is how well you can work your wood. You don't deserve no peace. Be real, Mahogany. Appreciate the dub, bro. I completely cut off family, friends, and acquaintances. Sometimes it's lonely, but the peace, tranquility, and sanity is priceless. Thank you for making me feel it's okay and belong to this outfit. Salute to you, bro. Salute to you, man. Man, that's real. It, it, and it's the thing, man. It feels lonely, but here's what I do, man. Here's what I do. Now, I just I travel. You have the freedom when you eliminate all of those expenditures that comes with just trying to keep up with people and live like people and be around people. I travel. And when I travel, it's so easy to meet someone. Man, I've traveled places, man, and met absolutely gorgeous women. But I didn't want to have, I didn't want to be intimate with them. That wasn't on my mind. I met them. We click. I'm in a place that I ain't never been or that I'm 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 in, but I'm always just chilling. Now I got a beautiful tour guide. I got a Beautiful tour guy. And you know what? We having fun. Is there some innuendo? Is there some flirting going on? Yeah, but that excites a woman. You know what excites a woman when an attractive man, and be away is a handsome man. When when a when, when a when a handsome man doesn't want anything from her. When a handsome man doesn't have an ulterior motive with an attractive woman, that's what makes a woman flock to you. That's why that's why cold approaching has such terrible eyes. Because a woman know if you cold approach her, you want something. Man only cold approach. Man, 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 I'm man. If it's a cold approach on a woman, he trying to wife up. You only cold approach if you want intimacy. It's the oldest game in the world, so it don't make sense to keep doing it. Because a woman automatically gonna play hardball with you because she already know you have an ulterior motive. How much sense does it make? And I'm telling you, man, this has happened to me several times. Happened to me in ATL, man. It's happened to me in Cali. Happened to me in Houston. It happened to me in Arlington. It happened to me in, in, in quite in Louisiana, in uh, New Orleans, rather. Man, it's happened to me in quite a few places. It, it just happens. It happened to me in Beham. It's happening to me in some, uh, South Carolina. It happened to me in South Carolina, man. And so what I'm telling you is if you're just somewhere just being flat, just being masculine, just being a man, boy, you are an interesting man if you are somewhere and you are having a blast and you're doing something that might cost a little bit of money, but it's something you really enjoy. So it ain't like flossing. You just show up in a bunch of jewelry. Man, before I show up in a bunch of jewelry, I'll go somewhere and I'll stay at a castle for two weeks. You know what I'm saying? With the full king treatment, I'd rather take that money and go stay in a castle, take a private jet to a castle, for, to, to, a, to, a, uh, to a, a city where there's a castle, and I stay in that castle for two weeks and get treated like a king with maid service, and men service, and butlers, and chef, and bathing girls, and all of that, man. That's what I like to do. I like to go live life, man. And boy, you could always come across somebody, a very attractive woman, man, who just want to have fun. Most of these attractive women, man, they just want to be treated like some other than a piece of me. You understand what I'm saying? They want to be treated like some other than a piece of meat. They want somebody who, who just want to chill with them. And that chilling always turns into something more quicker than you running around chasing them. That's why I don't listen to guys who talk about men chasing women. Man, they don't know nothing about women. They know something about chasing women. Now, if you want to chase women, a chaser of women can tell you a lot. He can't tell you how to get them. He can tell you how to chase them. Because if he can tell you how to get them, his cold approach odds will be better. But I ain't going to get off into the cold approach thing, man. We got a show coming up later about that. Y'all tune in to the show, man, at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll be right back on. And we will go ahead and talk about that dating coach thing, man, who showed that uh, get used to rejection makes you submissive to men. We got to go ahead and do it on here, man. So I found it. It's already loaded up. We're ready to go with it. So y'all be here for it because I'm going to play, I'm, I'm gonna play a, a longer version of it. Because there, it goes on for a while, and there are some there's some gems in there, bro. I'm going to drop, that's called, in that piece of content, I'm going to drop more gems in one piece of content than I ever dropped in one piece of content before. So y'all y'all don't miss that. Uh, Standard Howe, appreciate the dime. 
Thank you for covering this topic. It's a hard pill to swallow when you have to cut off people, including parents, siblings, or kids, due to respect, and people think you should just deal with it. That's the thing, man. People think you should deal with it because we deal with we live in a society where everyone wants to perpetuate this energy that you must be a servant to people. You must, you must be of service to people. It's your job to, to serve people. It's your job to be used by people. You should feel great as a man. The more people who can use you, the more people you can serve, the more people who can benefit from your presence. No, it's just about the people who are in your life benefiting from your presence. It ain't about piling them fools up. It ain't about that. Ricky Webster, appreciate the five ball. One love and friends told props to salute to you, bro. Appreciate it. Now, another thing I tell y'all is this, man. Hold up, man. Pesci in the building. Pesci, man. Appreciate the dub, man. Alpha King must uphold a high standard of honor and integrity across all relationships, public and private. Salute the good Dr. BOA and God bless. That's real talk, bro. That's real talk. And that's why you never hear me preach against having a relationship with a woman. You never hear me preach against it. Because all women aren't so terrible, you can't have a relationship with them. Matter of fact, most women aren't. But you have to be, you have to maintain a position of power. You have to exhibit all the force and strength that you can over a woman's emotions for her to know that you are something of value and she's going to lose you if she don't keep it together. That's all. That's all I promote. But let's get back into this. Now, another thing is this. Just imagine this. Imagine a child trusting and believing in an unworthy parent whose trail of broken promises and unfulfilled imaginations should, will convince anyone else to throw in the towel. But a child loves that parent. A child can't throw in the towel. A child wants to keep believing in that parent over and over and over and over again. I don't know how many of y'all saw the movie Blow, but you know, he was supposed to show up and pick his little girl up, but his homie set him up and got him jammed up. He never showed up. And by the time and then he went away for a long time. I think she finally did go to see him, you know, before he got out and all that. I think she did finally go to see him. But it was years later, man. She was growing by the time she went to see him. She was a little girl when he got locked up. But if he had stayed free and been able to keep making those promises and not showing up, she would have kept believing. She stopped believing because he couldn't even make the promises anymore. She couldn't see him anymore. He was gone. So he never got a chance to come around and tell another lie and make it up. But that's just so just imagine a child trusting and believing in a parent. That's a child who loves a parent. What is your excuse as an adult to allow someone to keep running you through the ringer like that? What's your excuse as an adult to allow someone to keep telling you they're going to do something that they don't do? What's your excuse as an adult to have somebody keep telling you, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. I apologize. I won't do it no more. What's your excuse as an adult to have someone looking at you giving you an excuse to why they can't do what they're supposed to do and why they don't ever do it. What's your, what's your excuse as an adult to keep listening to someone who every time you tell them about what they need to be doing, they turn around and make themselves the victim? What's your excuse as an adult to keep giving everything that you're giving, knowing you ain't getting nothing in return? Did the person tell you, well, keep on giving me some more. I'm going to eventually get this giving back thing right. Your excuse is stupidity, ignorance, self-hate. Lack of self-love, lack of self-respect, lack of self-worth, lack of self-validation, lack of self-elevation, lack of self-pedestalization, lack of self-prioritization. You just ain't got nothing for yourself. And as a man that's striving to be the most alpha version of yourself, you cannot live that way. You got to be prepared to cut people off, man. You got to be prepared. To cut people off. Got to be prepared to cut people off. Now, Stan, I believe, I mean, in real life, I think she actually went to see him in real life. So here's the thing, man. And this is one of the main problems I think that happens. Most people won't ever evolve into who you want, need, or hope they'll become. That's why you can't be dealing with people who don't measure up. If they don't measure up, they won't ever measure up. 
anybody who doesn't tick the boxes now, they're not going to grow into that. You can't create somebody. You're not God. You can't take somebody and create what you want. God already created them. You can't do it. If they're not who they're supposed to be or who you want them to be, rather, they're not going to be that. They may grow into that at some other time, but it's not going to be with you. How much time are you going to waste for somebody to become what you want them to be? So you can say, oh, I knew it was a good thing to wait. That never works out. It's never a good thing to wait. Ever. It never works out when you wait for somebody to become who you want them to be. Yes, it always goes the same way. When you cut them off, now they're who you wanted them to be. Oh, I learned to err in my ways and I'm, I know I was wrong and I know I, I know I was supposed to do. And you got to understand, you are so beautiful to me. They tell you all of that. They tell you all that. They tell you, I love you now. I understand. It's so good loving somebody when somebody loves you back. That's what they tell you now. They know it now. They thought about all the stuff. They thought the stuff was better. Sometimes people think the grass green on the other side. But they find out a room is still a room. They still find, they find that out. Even though there's nothing there but gloom, they know it. You got to protect yourself from your own willingness to be somebody's fool. Nobody can't make a fool out of you. You got to let yourself be a fool for somebody. Nobody come say, Abracadabra, you have become a fool. Nobody can do that. You got to let yourself be a fool for somebody. Anytime you don't blame nobody for using you. Blame yourself for being used. Don't blame nobody for dogging you. Blame yourself for being dogged. Don't blame nobody for fooling you. Blame yourself for being fooled. Don't blame nobody for abusing you. Blame yourself for being abused. Don't blame nobody for lying to you. Blame yourself for believing them. At some point, you know that the person isn't who they say they are. But you know what we do? We give them one more chance like Big. I got that good love girl you didn't know. That's how we live our lives. But as men, striving to be the most average version of yourself, you cannot afford to do that. You're killing your goals. You're killing your dreams. You're killing your life, man. You can't do that. So stop trying to wait for people to evolve into what you want them to be. They ain't going to never do it. For two reasons. They can't and they don't want to. So even if they could, they wouldn't. You know why? Because you already accepted them for who they are. Why in the world would I become somebody else when I get everything you got being who I am? That'll make me stupid. That will make me stupid. If you marry a woman at 355 pounds, why that woman gonna lose weight because you want her to? You already married her at 355 pounds. You ain't gonna leave because you get 362. Come on, man. You owe it to yourself, man, to do what's best for you. We have that right. We have the right. 770, shout out to GA. We got, man, we got to understand, brothers, that you owe it to yourself to do better, man. You know what I'm saying? And you got to think about it. Justification can be applied to any bad action. Anybody can justify anything they do if they give it enough thought. There is a just, I'm, I'm talking about a logical justification. A justification, well, if you ain't knowing it better, you'd believe it. Or, or a fake logical a fake logical justification. People can justify anything. And nine times out of 10, when they're doing it, they already got the justification for it in their mind already. So you can't let somebody do you bad and then tell you, well, well, this is why I did it. But I did it like this uh, 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 because uh, uh, I had this going on and, and this right did happen to me and, 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 and that person over there told me and, and, and well they told me you was is always an excuse justification is an excuse it's not justification you can't justify doing somebody dirty I ain't no justification for doing somebody dirty man we gotta stop allowing ourselves to believe that people can mean you well when they do you wrong I say again in a more calm tone we have to stop believing that people can mean you well 
when they do you dirty. People who mean you well don't do you dirty, and people who do you dirty don't mean you well. People that mean you well can't even mistakenly do you dirty. They care too much about you. You see what I'm saying? People who mean you well, who value you, they care too much about you to do you dirty, man. They just can't do it. They'll fight somebody else for doing you dirty. They don't want nobody to do you dirty. That's why I tell a woman, a woman in my life, man, I tell her, look, baby, I want to protect you from everybody, including myself. That's what make a woman open up. So you can tell a woman you can protect her from the world. You can tell a woman you can protect her from, from harm. You can tell a woman you can protect her from herself. But you got to protect a woman from yourself. How do you protect a woman from you? By being the man you're supposed to be. A woman to sit down and open up to you. She'll tell you anything about her life. And sometimes, man, you talk to a woman and she she be opening up telling you stuff she ain't never told nobody. And you know what you do? When she said, I never told anybody that. You know what you do? You be a man and you understand the value of that. She's telling you the value of that. She wants to feel safe. She wants to feel safe. Like what she told you is safe with you. So you know what you tell her? A simple. You know, I appreciate you sharing that with me too, baby girl. Come and give me a kiss. Let me tell you something, brothers. There's a way you deal with women, like a man. And there's a, a way you deal with scallywags, like a dog. And we ain't no dogs over here. We men. We men who deal with women, not dogs who deal with scallywags. That's just the way it is. We don't deal with scallywags, huh? We ain't gonna deal with them. Why? Because we don't want to. Them's beneath us. The scallywag, them's beneath us. We's up here. Scallywags down there. We do not believe in the scallywags. Got a couple more super chats up here, man. Shout out town, stand up. Salute, man. Appreciate the five bones. Just got off. What I miss is shout out to all my hours in chat and Dr. POA. Salute, bro. Salute. Oh, we've been going in, man. We've been going in. Johnny B, salute, man. Appreciate the dub. Only thing you get from giving people chances, anger, and the time you wasted that you don't get back. Keep on preaching, Doc. Salute. That's all you get, man. You get, man, listen. You give a person an opportunity to learn. So if somebody meet me, I'm very patient with a woman I just met. Because I know I'm a special kind of man. I know the demands that I place on her are different from the demands that any other man has placed on her. But the things I provide for her life, not just financially, the things I provide for her life and her well-being and her betterment of herself are different from any other man as well. So I give her time to learn. Maybe she was able to talk to that man like that. Maybe she gonna talk to me like that. But once I check her and let her know that better not have no more, it ain't gonna have no more. Because if it does, she's going to have to go. And she's going to have to go. Ali Lewis, man, appreciate the five bones. B-O-A, go against him. You'll be D-O-A. Salute, bro. Well said, well said. Salute to you. That might be it, man, for right now. All right. So, so here's the thing, man. Here's what we got to keep in mind. I'm not saying that People can't make mistakes. I'm saying that justification for wrongdoing is not accepting a mistake. It's telling you that what I did wasn't wrong. That you're taking what the worst thing somebody could tell you is that they after they did something foul to you is that you're taking it wrong. If they said something foul to you, you're taking it the wrong way. I didn't mean it how I said it. I didn't mean to do that. If I had known it would hurt you, those type of things right there, man. Man, we humans, you're an adult. You know certain things you say to people, man, it's gonna create animosity. See, when you believe in justification, that means that you want to believe in a person enough to sell yourself a lie. Because here's the thing about selling lies. I can't sell you a lie. I can show you a lie, and then you can buy the lie. I can't sell you a lie. It's kind of like I can't sell you a car. If you come to my dealership, I can't sell you a car. You got to come in my dealership. I got to show you a car. And then you got to buy that car. Now, am I going to convince you by showing you a very good presentation of this car? Yes, but the final decision is always the buyers. That's what you have to remember. You can't blame somebody for selling you a lie because I promise you, if somebody sold you a lie, and somewhere along the way you had some insight that it was a lie. 
and you just chose to believe it. Because we live in a hope culture. Everybody hopes that this is the one. Everybody hopes that this is the one that's going to get them an American dream. Everyone hopes that this is a relationship that's going to last forever. Forever, ever? Forever, ever. Yeah, that forever. Everybody hopes that this is the one that's going to give them what they think they want based on what this society tells them they should want. And as men, we can't live that way. We have to understand that it's a huge world out here. That This world is, is like a million frontiers that we haven't faced yet. We got to go out there in the world, man. We got to create the life that we want. And anybody who's perpetuating any energy that's going to hold you back from that, impeding your progress from that, getting in your way from that, becoming an obstacle to that, stand up to my boy saying anything against it even, you got to cut them off, man, because there's two kind of people in the world. The people that mean you're bad, and the people that mean you good. There ain't nobody else. Sony autofocus. I'm going ham. Smooth transition. Locks right on. Locks right on every time. Look, smooth transition. Locks right on every time. Not many misses. Sony autofocus. Phenomenal. Now, I will tell y'all this, man. I'm not saying we're perfect. Because we're all flawed individuals. I won't say flawed. We all have differences that take some time to get acclimated to. So whereas something about you is normal to you, it may take someone else a little bit of time to get acclimated to it. But here's the thing. Finding a way to blame yourself or otherwise quantify someone else's foulness toward you by saying you deserved it, even if it's something from the past. Well, I did this 15 years ago. I deserve this. Well, I did say this about you yesterday. I deserve this. Well, I did say, uh, well, 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 you know, one, one time back in the day, I did laugh at, 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 a, at somebody who was handicapped. I deserve that. Come on, bro. God is the forgiver. If you forgive yourself, and God forgives you as well. You ain't gonna take no punishment from nobody, man, for nothing that you've done. You gotta take no punishment. You got guys out here, man, taking stuff from a woman in a relationship, man, because of what they did when they were younger, of how many women they ran through when they were younger. Man, but you're but you're not younger. If you've changed, that means you learned your lesson. If you've grown, rather, if you've grown into the best version of yourself, then what you did before don't matter. Like God told the children of Israel, if you Live by these laws and do everything I tell you to do, you'll be blessed. But if you stop living by those laws and doing the things I tell you to do, I'm going to get on you. I'm going to punish you. And then all the good you did before going to be forgotten. See, doing good, being righteous, being upstanding, being the most alpha version of yourself is a continual process throughout life. You don't get to try sometime and other times you don't try. You don't get to be real sometime and other times you be fake. You don't get to be honest sometime and other times you be dishonest. You have to understand that when you are bad growing up and when you change your life for the better and you become the best version of yourself or at least a better version of yourself, then all that wrong stuff is forgiven. You've moved past it. You've, you've become a, a person who wouldn't do those things anymore. But by the same token, if you are a good person, upstanding person, righteous person, you're doing the right things in life, if you turn and you start doing bad, then all that good stuff you did going to be forgotten because life is an everyday process. You can't live off your credentials from 15 years ago, homes. You can't do it. I tell you what, if you made all A's in sixth grade, I want you to get in 12th grade and then you can't graduate and tell them, but I made all A's in sixth grade. They don't care. The only people who care about your sixth grade test score, your sixth grade uh, final grades, man, is the seventh grade teachers, man. Don't nobody care about nothing else. Life is an every year, yearly, you need to progress yearly. But here's the thing. Don't be ashamed or em embarrassed or disappointed because your progress is incremental. It don't matter. If you move one inch in the right direction, you're closer than you were yesterday. See, because this is the thing. You never know how far you got to go. You may only have to go three inches. Now, but you complain about moving one inch. Boy, you, you know how close you just got? You just got 30% closer to where you need to be. And you're out here complaining because you only move one inch. Well, guess what? 
What if you move four inches and fall off a cliff and miss everything? You worried about moving five inches, falling off the cliff when all you need is three. The real life concern of mine is that you will allow people to treat you badly because they feel badly. You'll allow people to destroy your goals and dreams because they don't have any. You'll allow people to treat you as if you don't matter because they don't love themselves. You'll allow people to demand that you give, but they never give them anything in return. And being the giver that you are, you just keep giving. Getting nothing back, just keep giving. And then you're drained. And your health is down the tubes. And your mental health is down the tubes. And your wealth is down the tubes. And you're still trying to be the good giving person that you are. Let me tell you something. You can always be a giver. But only give to people who deserve it. You can even be a lover. But only love people who deserve and earn it. You could be a saint to the people, but only be a saint to the people who deserve and earn it. And that's the problem. You can't cut people loose when you need to because you don't feel like you deserve to have peace. You feel like because you grew up in a certain environment, you deserve not to have peace. You feel like because things transpired a certain way in your life that you don't deserve to have peace of mind, that you don't deserve to be able to sleep at night. That you don't deserve to be, it's kind of like the, the idea of somebody who, who make good and then still stay in the hood. You've been in the hood so long, you've been in the gutter so long that you don't even think you deserve to be out of it. So you put yourself in a situation where you can get out of it and you just stay there anyway. And you end up like C. Murray. BG. Soldier Slim. Nipsey. See what I'm saying? You end up in a bad situation, man. And the reality of the scenario is that's not, we don't have to do that. You don't owe anybody anything but to love them as that brother. When you get blessed to be in a better situation, you, you embrace that and appreciate that. You don't let people tell you you don't deserve it. You don't let the people in an environment tell you where you don't deserve to be the one who makes it out of that environment. You don't let people who are doing bad tell you where you're not the one who deserves to be doing good. You don't let people tell, man, don't let people drag you down. Anytime you can't cut people off, you let people drag you down because the only time you need to cut people off is when you're elevating and they're heavy. You got to drop dead weight, boy. That got to be your goal in life. Let Keep that dead weight off of you. That got to be one of your main goals in life, man. Low key, appreciate the five bone. Like, like a video game, we'll always have to upgrade ourselves. We'll always, man, always have to upgrade. And here's the thing. That's a perfect example, bro. Let's say you got the PS2. If you got a PS2, fine. Classic game system. Don't know if you can get the service. Don't know if you can get no games for it. But if it's still working, fine. Wonderful game system. Graphics ain't got nothing on today's graphics, but fine. Now, let's say you get the PS5. You get the PS5. Nothing on the PS2 is going to work on the PS5. The plugs ain't going to work. The games ain't going to work. The controllers ain't going to work. Ain't nothing going to work on them. Nothing off the PS5 or the PS2 is going to work on the PS5. Why? Because upgrade is a change of systems. When you move into the next phase of life, you change systems. And so nothing from that past system is going to go with you unless it works with the new system. That's why I tell you, man, people have to buy into the process of your progress because if they buy into the process of your progress, they're going to benefit you on every level because they're ready to go with the progress. Anybody who doesn't, anybody who comes into your life and they're selfish and they want to use your life to benefit themselves, you can't trust that person. That person is never going to buy into the process of your progress because they're only focused on what they can get out of the scenario. I mean, here's the thing about people who want to focus on what they can get out of the scenario. They're so focused on what they're getting on level five that they're afraid to let it go and go to level six. So they may sabotage what it takes to get to level five, level six because they're so comfortable with what they're getting on level five. If, they're not, if they don't invest into the process of the progress, then they don't want to see level six. They're good on level five.
And that's real, man. See, some people are just damaged goods for whatever reason. So ain't nothing you can do to get along with them. Ain't nothing you can do to, you know, point them in a positive direction. Ain't nothing you can do them to bring them along with you. Some people are just damaged goods. And that's no fault of theirs. Some, when you're damaged goods, that means something has damaged you. And most times it's beyond your control. So some people are just damaged goods for whatever reason. So instead of believing they'll change, you must accept they will undoubtedly stay the same. And I think that's one of the major problems. That's one of the major things that keeps you from giving up on people, moving on from people, because you can't accept that they'll never change. I want you all to think about that. They'll never improve. They'll never upgrade. They'll never want to become the best version of themselves because they're content with the version of themselves they are right now, man. And what you got to keep in mind is if somebody's content with the version of themselves that they are right now, they are not going to seek to improve. They don't care about improving. Improving is not in their wheelhouse. They could care less, literally care less about improving, man. And that's real, man. And here's the thing that we got to keep in mind. There are more bad people than good people in the world. I think that's the scariest fact that we all have to face and embrace. There are more bad people than good people in the world. A lot more. The majority of people in the world are bad. The majority of the people in the world would rather hurt you than help you. The majority of people would rather see you fail than succeed. The majority of people would rather see you dead than alive. And when it all boils down, you know, we have to keep in mind. When I say people, I mean people. Listen, man, I'm a brother in America. Who's more likely to take me out? Think about how crazy that is. Who's more likely to take me out right now? You. Who's more likely to take you out? Be real. SJ3, Markel, I mess you out. Who's the one? Tell me. Who's more likely to take you out? So not only are damaged women incurable, damaged men are too. Damage is damage. And so we have to make sure that we don't say that, okay, well, that group of people over there are damaged, they're, they're done. This group of people here damaged, they're okay. No, damage is damage and it's deep. It runs deep. It's deep seated in the psyche of those who are damaged. And so until you decide that you're going to create a, 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 a strong relationship with the most high, yeah, you're going to have to go get some counseling for the rest of your life. You got to go talk to men and talk to women about it. And you're not going to ever be able to get over it. You're not going to be able to cure it. You're not going to be able to be whole again. Because none make it whole. Except the one who is bold. And that's the most high, man. So since there are more bad people than good people in the world, don't stay in a bad environment trying to make it good. If the environment is bad, it's because the people are bad. Listen, there's a group in Baltimore. You know, Baltimore is, man, Baltimore had 338 uh, murders last year. Had 330 in 2020. There's an organization called, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's an organization that's trying to end, end the, the gun violence and make the hood a safe place. Make the, you know, and make the city a safe place. Because that's that that city like the Wild Wild West. One of the dudes in, in, in the and just in I think in the past few months or so, three people in that organization have gotten knocked off, man. Just recently, man, a dude got knocked out. They just rolled up, man, and just just they just rolled up an out off the block. Think about it. You're living in an environment where you're trying to stop the violence and the people who are committing the violence want to take out the people who are trying to stop the violence. This is a crazy world we live in, man. So it doesn't work to me. You can't change the hood, man. You can't change the hood. The hood doesn't want to change. The hood wants to be the hood. Leave the hood alone, man. Go help somebody that want to be helped. The hood does not want to be changed. Stop trying to change people that don't want to be changed. Stop messing up people's life, man. They want to be in poverty. 
They, they like that environment. It is their environment. They feel like they have some control over that environment. They feel like they enforce the rules of that environment. And for the most part, they do. As long as law enforcement stays out of that environment, the hood makes and enforces their own rules. And they don't want any interference in that. Because that's the only environment they know. And you got to keep in mind, brothers. You got to keep in mind. The bottom line is you have to create your own positive environment. And that's why I tell you, man, you have to have an alpha space for yourself. You have to have a space where you can go and just bask in the glory of your own alpha energy. Rebuild it, rejuvenate it, increase it, you know, polish it, do whatever you need to do with it. Strengthen it. And that's just what we have to do, man. You know, the reality of the scenario is life is tough, but it's tougher if you don't focus on protecting yourself and your peace of mind. We'll go ahead and head out of here, man. SA3, my brother, I appreciate you being here, man. Riding it out with me, man. My squad, brother. When I get to moving around, SJ, man, we're we going we to have to link up, bro. So everybody, man, yeah, it's called Safe Streets, man. So everybody, man, I appreciate y'all being in the joint, man. Y'all be back, man. We'll be back at 4.05 p.m. for the next show, man. I'm about to go kick my feet up for a minute, man, get ready for the next show. Uh, actually, I might do about 30 minutes of cardio, man. Y'all know I just, I just bought me a treadmill, man, so I got a treadmill at the crib. I do cardio at the crib now, man. Let me tell you something. Life changer. Game changer right there, man. So I appreciate everybody being in the joint, man. Y'all put God first. Keep grinding and growing, my brothers. Peace.